So about three years ago, I saw a video by Matimio stating that he played Warframe for a little bit and he really enjoyed himself. He talked about a few things here and there, but he didn't go into much detail about things, which really hindered my first experience with Warframe, which I'll get into here in a bit. And I mean no offense to Matimio because I am a longtime subscriber to him and I think he's a great personality, but since he makes videos on a daily basis, then he missed out on a lot of the nuances of Warframe. That if I knew what they were, then I would not have turned away from Warframe three years ago. See, when I first opened Warframe, much like Matimio, I was really impressed by the combats and quality of the game. But then I got to my orbiter and started to look around, and that's where I had so many problems with the game. Much like Matimio, I had no clue how to unlock other Warframes or weapons, and when I saw that the Warframes and weapons cost Platinum, which is the currency of the game that you buy with real world money, I seriously thought that the only way to get them was to straight up buy them, and I didn't know that they had the most fair microtransaction system not only in the free to play market, but in the AAA market as well. Also, I had no idea that the game was a looter, which is funny because I love looters such as Diablo. In fact, Diablo was pretty much the very first video game that I ever played. Due to the fact that nothing is really explained that well in the game, I completely gave up on it. But I came back to it three years later and gave it a real chance. And now it's my favorite game, and I've put in nearly 500 hours into it. The purpose of this review is to bring new players and people who have left the game in the past back to the game. And most importantly, keep those players from hopelessly giving up on this masterpiece of a game. So welcome to my early 2018 review of Warframe. So to start out this video, I am going to try my best to explain what a looter is, because a true looter is very rare nowadays. And when you know how to properly play a looter, it can be the most rewarding gaming experience out there. But if it's not your thing, then I completely understand because the looter genre is extremely niche. So what is a looter? Much like the name says, it focuses a lot on loot. Weapons, armor, cosmetics, and in Warframe's case, frames, is what you'll be trying to get the entire time. And how do you get these items? Grind. Grind a lot. Let me put it in more relatable terms. Imagine in Dark Souls 3 you chose the knight because it's the most well-rounded class in the game. And you made your way down to Gundir, and once you killed him, he dropped one out of three parts for the Pyromancer class. And in order for you to get the other parts, you have to go back and face him a few more times. And once you get all the parts necessary for the Pyromancer class, you have an entirely new class available for you to use any time you like. That basically changes how you play the game. And the same process can be done with rare weapons and mods, while the less rare items can be achieved by just playing the game and finding them. Well, to put it in incredibly simple terms, that's a looter. You see, in Warframe, some of the more common weapons and gear are achieved by simply playing the game. But if you want some of the best weapons or new frames, then you have to get them from specific events, quests, or grind them from bosses, and you'll find yourself doing similar activities over and over and over and over again, until you get what you need. Again, if that sounds like it's not going to be your thing, then I completely understand, but I still think it's worth a shot, because there's something that is essential for a looter to get right, in order to not be boring, and it's something that Warframe got so incredibly right. And that thing would be the gameplay. What is there to do in Warframe? Whew. A lot. You'll start your adventure in Warframe trying to learn the movement system. And it'll look a little like this. Try moving around. Take it slowly. Get 
Then once you start to play, you'll learn the little things such as sliding and bullet jumping and wall climbing and double jumping and well, well you get the idea. There, there's a lot. And once you learn how to utilize this incredible movement system, you'll start to do things like this. After that, you'll start to progress through the star map and face bosses so you can unlock more frames and weapons, which by the way, there are 35 warframes that each have incredibly unique abilities and appearances and hundreds of weapons, and that doesn't include the prime weapons and warframes. Then eventually you'll reach the point where you can do the two main quests of the game called The Second Dream and The War Within, and to give you an idea of how good these quests really are, it is basically an unspoken rule that nobody spoils these quests for anybody. Ever. If anybody asks in game chat, region chat, or clan chat, about those quests, then several people will simultaneously comment, no spoilers allowed in chat. After you complete those quests, you should have some powerful warframes, and you'll think that that's the end of the leveling. You're wrong, because... You see, Warframe has these locations called Relays, which are basically player hubs where a lot of the players go and just socialize. But there are also factions at these relays that contain mods for specific Warframes that make them even more powerful, and you have to complete tasks for these factions in order to obtain these mods. But be careful because some factions don't like other factions and when they find out that you've sided with the other, then they'll send units to go and kill you at random moments. Speaking of things coming to kill you, there's a certain very powerful enemy called the Stalker who really doesn't like you killing bosses. When you kill a boss, you'll get a message stating your actions have consequences. And then he will randomly show up and come and try to kill you and he is really hard to kill. Also, there are some incredible quests for the newer Warframes that you'll have to do to unlock those Warframes, and then you'll start farming for Prime Warframes and Prime Weapons, which are basically special versions of Warframes and Weapons that got a nice visual rework and increased stats. And then you'll make your way to the open world section of the game called the Plains of Eidolon, and grind the unique items that are available there, and fish and hunt the giant bosses called Eidolons, which there were several more added to the game in a recent update. And then you'll start doing sorties, which are a set of missions that have certain limitations, such as bow only or no shields, and you face high level enemies and get really high rewards from these. And then you'll participate in the true end game of Warframe, which is Fashion Frame and Ikea Frame. And more and more and more and more. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to do, and the most important thing is that the grind never really gets to you because the gameplay is so smooth, so fun, and varied that you never get bored, which is really, really important for a looter. So with all of this going on in a free-to-play game, how in the world does a developer make money? Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's talk about digital extremes and the economy of the game. I just want to start off by stating that I do not support microtransactions in full price games whatsoever. I don't care if it's a loot box or if it's cosmetic. If I paid any amount up front, then I damn well deserve everything in the box. Saying that, 
Warframe is a free to play game, so microtransactions are kind of expected. But what's not expected is how Digital Extremes goes about doing this in a way that puts every other free to play and full price game on the market to shame. At the beginning of the video, I stated that when I first tried the game three years ago, I saw that you could buy all the frames and weapons with platinum, which is the premium currency of the game. Well, at that point, I had no idea how the game worked. I had no idea that you can get every single Warframe by either facing a boss or completing a quest. I had no idea that you can get every single weapon by leveling up and getting them with credits, which is the non-monetized in-game currency. And most importantly, I had no idea that you can get platinum, and a lot of it, without ever opening your wallet. I hope I've made it clear that weapons and warframes are incredibly easy to get, but what about the prime frames? I mean, if you wanted to buy Mirage with her weapons and accessories, then you'd spend $140. Well, that's not true. You see, with these packs, you're actually buying the Platinum, and a whole lot of it, and it just comes with Mirage Prime. But you know what? If you wanted to get Mirage Prime without spending money, then it's incredibly easy to do by opening relics, aka space cabbages, which are basically the loot boxes of the game. But, 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 before you leave this video, loot boxes cannot be bought. And within an hour of playing the game, you can have upwards of 20 to 30 relics, and you can see everything that's within the relic, and your chances of getting those items, and you can increase your chances of getting the more rare items by putting traces into them, which cannot be bought and can only be received by playing Fisher missions. And when you open a relic, you get to choose from the items that the rest of your squad opened up in that mission as well. So if you're going for a gold item and you have three friends, then you have four times better of a chance to get that item than if you were to do it alone. To give you an idea of how easy it is to get prime weapons and warframes, I've only spent maybe 20 hours doing Fisher missions in the 500 hours I've played this game, and I currently have 9 prime warframes and 9 prime weapons. And I also have three extra Mirage Prime sets, one of which I gave to a friend, and the other two I'm going to sell for Platinum once she gets vaulted. Which, speaking of which, is an interesting system that DE has implemented. You see, every few months DE will release a new Prime Warframe to the game, and once this Prime has been in the game for quite a while, it will be temporarily retired and put into the vault. Now this does not mean that it's impossible to get these items because remember, you can choose these items from your teammates relics in Fisher missions. I've gotten Trinity Prime, which I gave to a friend, and Serum Prime, and I just need the blueprint for Ash Prime, and they're all vaulted prime frames. But the actual significance of the vault is to ensure that there is some actual value to the primed warframes and weapons. You see, Mirage is the newest prime warframe, and she came out last December, and according to Warframe Trader, which is a fan-run trading site for the game, a complete set for Mirage Prime is on average worth 60 plat, which is roughly 4 US dollars. But once she gets vaulted, then her price will go up a bit. And if she stays vaulted long enough, she can be worth around 200 plat. This ensures that primed weapons and warframes don't get to the point where they are only worth one plat or heck, even free, because at that point, what's the point of having primed items? But on the other end, if items get too expensive or if the community asks for them, which both cases apply to Loki Prime, then DE will unvault them, and then they're available in the game again. And speaking of the unvaulting of Loki Prime, who was also unvaulted on alongside Frost and Ember Prime, Digital Extremes did something extraordinary that it's absolutely unheard of, and honestly just blew my mind when I first saw this. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we have yep. important questions for you because, yes. as you know, if you were here in Warframe's early era with the Prime Access, you know Ember didn't have a Prime Accessories pack. We added that due to feedback in the Prime Access path, and the Prime Vault hasn't got one yet. So you guys want one, we want to make one. The question is, what? So our first question for you, and again, talk to us on Twitter, forums, Reddit, wherever you choose. What do you want? Do you want a pack with everything bundled together, or do you want separate accessory packs per Warframe? 
So do you want, for example, a single accessories pack for Ember, Loki, and Frost in this case, or one giant accessories pack? Interesting. Second question is sort of price points. If you guys are buying a vaulted accessories pack, is it the $25, $30, or $35 range that you're looking for such a thing? Obviously, that depends on what goes in it, clearly. And then the last one, of course, is what to bundle with it. Do you just want the accessories or do you want some added bonuses? Platinum, boosters, stuff to say. You have a whole bunch of options to work with because you know how our sort of bundling works with the Prime accessories, with the Prime access. So just, you know, think about it, talk with your friends, think about what you want in such a thing, and let us know. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. The guess is cheapest with the most. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> that right there absolutely blew me away. In a time where developers are shamelessly reaching for your wallets and asking for more and more without ever considering the consumer, Digital Extremes comes out to us and asks us what kind of bundles we want and how much they should cost. This is like when you order a meal and your waiter forgets your drink and the manager personally comes to your table and apologizes, pays for your entire meal, gives you a free dessert, and gives you a coupon for another free meal. Suck it, EA. Also, there's something else that speaks to me on a level that's unmatched in the gaming industry. If you've looked around the cosmetic menu of Warframe, you'll notice that some items have a real price attached to them, not platinum. And at first, I can understand how this can be a turnoff, but here's what's so amazing about these cosmetic items. These items are part of what's called the Tinogen, which consists of items made by the community that are officially supported by Digital Extremes. And not only that, but the creators of these items get 30% of every single sale. Not a one-time check, but they get part of the profit for every single sale. Suck it, Bethesda. If you've been on my channel long enough, then you may know that I like to do visual overhaul mods for different games. And seeing this makes me so incredibly happy, and I am more than willing to spend money on these items because I know that the money is going where I want it to go, which is in the pockets of the people who actually made it. But saying this, I do understand if you are still unhappy that there are microtransactions in this game. But I hope I've made it clear that you can get the full experience of this game by not spending a single penny. Honestly, I, I hope that other free-to-play and even AAA developers take note from this because the best advertisement is word of mouth by a supportive community and that kind of advertisement is free advertisement. In the music industry, there's a problem going around where we get these pretty faces with no talents and no depth to sing a song written by other people and backed up by a band that have never met each other. There's no passion in that, but people will buy it and listen to it because a singer looks attractive. Gaming has the same problem. No matter how shallow and uninteresting the game is, people will buy it if the graphics are nice. Well, DE says fuck that, and they create not only a pretty game, but one that is feature rich and has depth that is almost unmatched. They don't want your wallet, they want you to have a damn good time. I have never seen a game so continuously supported by a developer, who by the way only consists of around 180 people, for such a long time. This game has seen a complete visual and mechanical overhaul more times than I can count on both hands, and they promise much, much more. They plan to have open world areas such as the Plains of Eidolons on more planets, they plan to keep adding warframes and weapons, and most importantly they plan to keep this game fun. As a YouTuber, it's very hard for me to outright insist for you to try a game because I don't know what you like, but this game is something that I will wholeheartedly recommend to every single one of you without hesitation. It's free and worth every single penny. <laughs>